Nano reef tanks are an absolute staple of the saltwater fish keeping community. And here's my one. It's been running for I think about eight months now. It's had its ups and downs. Long term viewers of my channel will have seen this go through a lot of different stages. At the moment though, I think it's looking the best it has ever looked. It's a really stable little macroalgae tank this one and I'm going to show you and explain to you how I've achieved this in a relatively short amount of time. Nano and Pico tanks are popular because they are more accessible for people with less space. I mean it's not really the case now that people only keep nano tanks because they can't keep a bigger tank. Keeping a nano tank is a bit of a challenge actually compared to a larger tank. I found that nano tanks tend to be a little bit more challenging than keeping a large reef tank. The biggest issue with smaller tanks is of course keeping them stable. In a small tank things change a lot faster than in a larger tank and that's one of the reasons why they can be a little bit harder to keep. However, the pros are pretty apparent and it's mainly financial. Smaller tanks cost less, smaller equipment costs less and on the whole you could probably do a tank like this for around £200 and I say that will be the absolute max you would need to spend. So I call this a filterless nano reef tank and it is a filterless tank. The only thing we've got in here that is in mechanical in any way is this surface skimmer. This is in here for two reasons. Firstly, we do get some flow and flow is not filtration and flow is very important in a reef tank which is why it's essential. I really wouldn't recommend trying to do a reef tank in any size without a good amount of flow. The second thing this does is keep the surface of our water clean and I absolutely hate when you get a build up of oils and dust on the surface of an aquarium it just makes it look disgusting and that's basically what this thing is for it sucks water in through the surface over that weir there's a tiny bit of floss in there which is purely just to capture that dust and dirt and then it blows out the water there's no biological or chemical anything going on inside of that and it's only taken out dirt from the surface so I don't count that as a filter I mean you might disagree but that's my stance on it other than that we are completely free of any other equipment we've got no heater in here our light is a very basic Aquion planted tank light cost me 40 pounds on Amazon now this is quite an expensive little light the reason I've gone for this one is because I like the profile of it but you can pick up something very similar to this probably looking a bit different for like 10 pounds to 15 pounds I went for the expensive option just because I liked the look of it there's no heater of course this shed is warm now this is something you might not be able to replicate uh, and it's a little bit unfair not telling you so this little tank is in my fish room and this fish room stays pretty warm okay at the moment we're at 24 degrees in the winter we can get down to 16 17 degrees and in the heat of the summer we get up past 30 so i just open some doors and everything but it keeps this tank at a reasonable temperature so in a normal house you would need a heater as well okay so you'd need something like this power head and a heater but that's not filtration so we're filterless in here so how are we doing this tank how are we keeping it stable how are we keeping the inhabitants happy and alive there's no hair algae you'd notice um, it's been just such a dream tank this at the start I did have issues because I used a different light I had a spotlight and it was well too bright it was making my macroalgae bleach uh, there was like a burnt spot in the center if you're a regular viewer of my channel you will know that this is looking far better than it used to there is of course a little bit of bleaching on the blue octodes so I think this light might still be a little bit too bright but I can't dim it so this is what we're working with but how did we get this tank to mature and get it to the point it is at now well as I said earlier I've always struggled with nano tanks it's been one of my issues I've never put enough effort into them I'm reasonably lazy as far as it goes with fish keeping I like things to be easy I like things to be automated so nano tanks don't really work for me because they take a bit more effort than I'm normally willing to put into but I did this as an experiment there's some things in here or at least one thing in here which you've never seen before nobody as far as I'm aware 
has done this in a reef tank. I mean, if you've seen it before, let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure no one has, and that is using freshwater substrate in our marine aquarium here. Lots of people, if not 99% of the reef keeping community, will use this. Yes, yeah, so I'm a bit of a diet on blooming here at the moment, but back to the substrate. This is coralline sand or coral sand. This is a fine one. You get it in all sorts of different sizes and textures, but the general principle is the same. It's crushed up calcium carbonate and we know it's reef safe. We know it has some buffering potential in your aquarium so it can help with stability of alkalinity and pH. And that's why we use it because it works, it's proven and it's good stuff. And what you'll find is nobody does anything else. No one looks at the reef system in a different way. You'll know that I like macroalgae. So essentially what I'm doing here is a planted reef tank, not a coral-based reef tank. So we can approach this in different ways. We can approach this a similar way as you would approach a freshwater planted tank. Uh, lots of people do freshwater nano planted tanks without a filter. Some still have some sort of water movement, some don't, but as I said, reef tanks, you need that water movement, whether it's just corals or whether it's macroalgae, it's, it's essential. But this, I think, is the key to the whole thing working in the way it does. This is Manado Dark by a company, uh, a German company called JBL. So it's a European product. I think it's available in America and other parts of the world, but lots of people use it in freshwater planted tanks in Europe, in the UK. And what's so special about it? Well, I've used it in a shrimp tank before and it worked really well. The, the tank didn't need to cycle particularly long or hard. And I was quite impressed with how the plants grew in it. And it's got a few key aspects. Firstly, I really like it because it's a dark color and you don't get dark substrates in reef tanks until now, of course. Secondly, it has iron in it. It's just imbued with iron. In fact, when you put this in your tank to start with, it can go a little bit rusty. You'll see orange patches appear and that's iron coming out. But that's not a problem because macroalgae likes iron. It's an essential thing for macroalgae. In fact, normally I have to dose iron into my tank. So this solves that issue of do dosing iron, gives the uh, macroalgae the iron it needs as and when it needs it. The second or third now good property of this is essentially, apparently, it absorbs and releases excess nutrients as and when they become a problem. So if you've got too much phosphates or nitrates, it will absorb it in. Uh, and then when your macroalgae needs it, it releases it again. I don't know how it works. I'm not a chemist. Someone will have to explain, but it says it on the packet. That's what it does. So it can keep your nitrates and phosphates more stable. That might be why there's no hair algae in there because there's no excess. Uh, fourthly, this is incredibly porous and that is the key aspect. That's the most important aspect. This is incredibly porous. When you put this into your tank to start with, sometimes a lot of it will float around because it's full of little holes and that's full of trapped air. But what does that mean for our reef tank? It means that this sand bed is our filter. This is our biological filter. And in some respects, it's also a bit of a chemical filter, isn't it? If it's absorbing excess nutrients. This here is about two, maybe three inches deep. And we're going all the way down to an inch over here. So it's reasonably deep. There's a lot of surface area in this substrate. And that is where we're getting our biological filtration. Obviously, we've got some rocks in here. We've got some live rock. And that's also going to be doing biological filtration. But I think, I truly believe, if we took those rocks out, this substrate would still have enough capacity to be the filter, biological filter, of this tank. And it's really worked out incredibly well. That was one of the reasons why I set this tank up, was just to test this substrate. And I've got to say, I'm so impressed with it. I would now definitely use this in a full-blown reef tank it looks awesome it works it's clearly reef safe you know we've got a couple of polyps in here they're not dead there's nothing in there that's hurting them uh, and then the mackerel is absolutely thriving the fish are happy we've got an okinawa goby and we've got a little damsel in there he's hiding in the shadows and everything's hunky dory isn't it so that is the key in my opinion now of course the mackerel itself is doing a lot of the filtration too it's keeping the nitrates 
and phosphates down. It's in fact I'm having to dose it in there because there isn't enough nitrates and phosphates generated in this tank. There's only two little fish. I feed them a few scraps of flake every now and then and that's it. That's all they get. So I actually have to keep the essential elements and nutrients in check in here by myself. And I do that by doing large and regular water changes, which is again something counter to how people run their reef tanks. I'm lucky enough to have access to all of this, okay? And it's something that I've built and I've designed it specifically to make my life easier. As I said, I'm lazy. I like things to do the work for me. And my water change schedule is essentially, this gets water changed twice a month. I put 250 liters of fresh water in there. When I do this water change, I then drain this down 100% and this water goes down my drain and then what I do is I turn on my auto top up which is there and that sucks water out of here and refills it from my system water so this is easy for me to do it's actually not the best because this water will be slightly uh, nutrient deficient based on the fact that there is other nutrient using things on this system so in an ideal world, I would use 100% fresh saltwater RO water uh, and put it in there, but I'm lazy. So this is the easiest solution for me and it's working really well. And I do that twice a month, 100% water change, and that is enough to keep this system full of the nutrients it needs. And um, you'll notice when I get, well I'll notice, when I get close to needing a water change, things will start to look pale. So stuff in this water does get used up really quickly and that as I said is hard in a nano tank because there's no excess in a nano tank everything's running sort of super lean a lot of the time uh, and that's essentially what this tanks doing as well water changing hundred percent of your tank is not something reefers do the reason is with certain corals they don't like that and I also think it's a bit of a myth that they don't like that because I've done it in tanks with LPS corals in there and softies in there and uh, they don't blink an eyelid. Um, Acropora is not something I've kept before so you know people who keep Acropora if you don't want to do 100% water change you will know your reasons for that but I find softies and LPS to be really tolerant to water changes. The biggest issue especially with macro is actually temperature. What you don't want to be doing is putting cold water into your tank as you're water changing that is the biggest issue so I always re I always heat my water up first um, obviously from the sump it's going to be warm but out of there I always preheat my water mix before I put it into my sump and then therefore it's warm when it goes into here that is the key because if you have cold water it will cause your calerpas normally to go sexual so that's something to bear in mind if you're going to be doing manual water changes. This tank has changed my preconception of nano tanks now. They used to be difficult, they used to be a challenge, but I think the key was my lack of effort to put into it. And rather than change my lack of effort, I've created a workaround for my lack of effort, and that is letting the tank do the work. I'm letting the tank do the heavy lifting for me. We've got the filtration in the substrate and the rocks, we've got the flow, and then that allows me to focus on the inhabitants. And the inhabitants is the macroalgae. The macroalgae is being looked after by the fact that I do large water changes regularly. And in turn, the fish and the small amount of cleanup crew that I've got in there, just some dove snails and a hermit crab, are mopping up the remains. So this is actually a reasonably easy tank to maintain. It's changed my thought process on nano tanks. What do I do? I just clean the glass, I do my water changes, I trim the macroalgae every now and then. That's it. That's all I do to this tank. Obviously I feed the fish occasionally when I remember. But there's plenty of copepods and amphipods generated in here just by simply them having all of the macroalgae as cover. This is almost, it's not really, but it's almost a self-sustaining little nano tank. Obviously my input is mainly the water changes. Other than that, this is a really easy little tank to keep. And I hope it's inspired you to try something, try something different 
with the substrate. You could easily set one of these up in your home or on your office, even in your wargaming shop. If you owned one, you could do something like this quite easily. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. I hope you've watched to the end, because if you have, you are my hero. Watching to the end is the absolute best thing you can do for me, and you are my VIP. So thank you for watching. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed it, and happy fish keeping.